started on behalf of the Office of UH Alumni Relations, we welcome you to the history of surfing. I'd like to call upon Provost Michael Bruno, who will introduce you to tonight's speakers. Thank you, Donna and Laura and the team. Aloha. Ian Apati Masterson, who some of you may know as the surf professor, hails from Ko'olapoko, Oahu, and has spent over 20 years as an educator, ocean recreation and safety specialist, archaeologist, and Hawaiian cultural practitioner. Ian received his master's in Pacific Island Studies from UH Manoa and also has an associate's degree in liberal arts from Windward Community College, where he is an instructor and workforce development coordinator. Ian was a beach lifeguard, there's a theme here, for water safety at Kaneohe Marine Corps Base headquarters for over 10 years. Since 1999, he has developed and taught curricula for courses in Pacific Surf Science and Technology, Polynesian Surf Culture, Pacific Island Studies, Mythology of the Hawaiian Landscape, Environment History, and Sustainability. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, stoked. I appreciate that. I'm very honored to be teaching with uh, uh, a mentor of mine. I'm very just, it's our first time in academia to be able to stand up together and, and share. That. Yeah, I just gotta say, I'm still. <laughs> I think um, so. 1999 was uh, Kawani Maineke Kumu at Winter Community College who, who saw the point of the University of England offering a surf science and technology degree. Here we are in Hawaii in the cradle of surfing and, and, and gee, we kind of take it for granted. What is the education value of that? And it was this process that started me thinking. You know, what is it like to look at life through the eyes of a surfer? Hollywood tells us one thing. <laughs> Never mind that. Uh, but really, it's very intelligent and physically fit and, and spiritually connected to nature and um, really a lot of mental awareness and a passion that drives you for building a relationship with the ocean. I think that's one of the greatest things about surfing is it draws you into nature. And in these digital times, I think that's really important. So, thanks. I'm super excited to share with you some of these things. And so, way too much to share. I'll be moving kind of fast and try not to tell too many stories. Kumu Palmai Ten was in the room, another mentor. Kumu Palmai Ten, that's what I'll do a little bit. He saw me go through a transition from, you know, 80 slash West and Surfer got into. Um, who I am today, and part of that was recognizing down there in Aotearoa and doing having to do for meetings and protocols how similar, how related, how connected, how one people we all are. We are the ocean. This is a fairly old sense. And, um, so, through that, I recognize that it's important for us to honor and act in a Hawaiian way in, in that we are here in Hawaii. So, there's the family chat that I wrote. There's a place based chat for. Uh, the place that I live, Hakipu'u, out there in Kolo, Hakipu'u area of Oahu, and for my family, because we had to introduce ourselves everywhere we went. <laughs> um, I also want to honor our emeritus status, Kumu Ben Thini, professor at UH Manoa, and I recently passed away. He was the one who, who got up in 1950 and wrote the book, Surfing the Sport of Kings. And um, did his research on that, and then of course went on to help to build the Buddha of Star Polynesian Voyaging Society and inspire a worldwide voyage that has not completed. That's a lifetime, but it is so connected to surfing. I got a chance to meet him in '99 and asked him, Can I, can I try? <laughs> um, can I follow your research line? He was very encouraging. You see, after I did a bunch of the research, now you gotta go out and build the boards and ride them. <laughs> and, and now look at the Kelowna kids and, and all of the young boys out of Makata all over the place surfing the live surfboards. Sustainable surfboards made of wood. And 
Uh, we got plenty of invasive trees to get out of for us, and that's a good way. Good thing to do with them is build circles. <laughs> All right. And then he says that surfing is basic re-adaptation of the oceanic voyaging traditions. I added that little gut surf to survive part. <laughs> but simple board surfing, as he puts it, is a general marine adaptation pioneered by the first people to enter the Pacific. It's sure because they went through waves to get offshore in Southeast Asia. They had to go through waves to get to these islands. Um, yeah, we can talk to Moana when you had to leave each island and get to the next one. That's what it took. Uh, it's amazing how Disney actually covers most of my topics. <laughs> <laughs> I can always refer to Moana when I need to. Uh, my daughter loves it too, so it's great. But, um, oh, hey, okay. cool. Yeah. There they are, there's the kids. <laughs> A lot of, one thing that everybody asks me is how did it all begin? Who was the first people to surf? Where did it happen? Well, oh, never know. But I'll tell you, the dolphins and the sharks, the albatross, the cockpit birds, uh, cuckoo birds, all the different birds on the sea, they're surfing long before us. And there's no doubt in my mind that that, that was probably the inspiration. I think all of us are captured by that feeling of flow with the ocean. And there's something even deeper, universal. Yeah, I mean, when I say universal, I mean space and time, the universe. But, yeah, it may have started for survival, but it grew into a passion of 20 million surfers share today across the world. So why, why is it why It should be considered, it is considered, and it really is a very little surfing. It's because surfing was born in Oceania. All the shores, he said, okay, God, then he was this. Wherever they had fishing villages along the coastlines, they were probably doing some form of surfing. And in, in, in the Pacific, most of the islands did have rudimentary forms of surfing. When we get out into Polynesia, as we say, remote Oceania, um, we see that that development grows into a daily activity, a ritual activity, and even further, it's integrated into the culture. Part of the reason Hawaii is such a great place to serve is because of its environment. The most dynamic, is, as uh, our provost said, the most dynamic uh, environment in the whole world. You have a perfect climate, warm weather, very warm this week, uh, <laughs> light, light breezes, excellent surf. We had North Swell last week out of nowhere, South Swells. Uh, so there's surfing all around us. We have Tall mountains with trees and forest rocks, we can build big surfboards. Hard to do that on an atoll unless the right law floats on in. And we have some tools, uh, all these different things to be able to build surfboards. Plus, yeah, we're surrounded by the waves. And we're at the end of a migration group that developed that surf. And so that leads us to the cultural factors. Ooh. So I've never looked at a screen this week. We are just kind of sharp and laser on top. Um, as surfing was integrated into the culture, we see class restrictions and, and the, the historical periods of, of kapu and work and worship happened in Uruguay. Uh, the, the time, the Noah periods when it was uh, when those kapus were set down in the winter time, the surf came good. It was time to surf. Yeah. So it became part of the festivals and games, choir mana. You know, the, this thing with Bang, what didn't happen all around the Pacific? Not all uh, island cultures in the Pacific were into Bang, but boy, Hawaiians are into Bang. Right? Still to this day, everybody's laughing. Yeah, I had to play Vegas last week. It was a traditional part. And that was something that, you know, it's not just Bang, though, it's the idea of whole Ike to display that mana that you've acquired from, from interacting with the natural environment. And to hold it to display that mana that you've inherited through your ancestors. Now, we serve for our ancestors, our deities, as such. So, it became a national pastime of the white people, says John Papa all ages, all classes, ranks of peoples, all sexes, 
Not that absolutely everybody served. John Paul even says himself, my Kanaka head and all your friends tell me. And he goes into his descriptions. But it was so common, it was such a well understood activity that Proverbs, Proverbs could be made and told. And people would generally understand that. And my skilled surfer gets wet. <laughs> We've all been in the game so much. But that, catching that first wave is the most exciting thing in the world. So as I said, it was taught with any sport that people could relate to as an activity in daily life. The daily practice that both crosses and reinforces class and gender boundaries. Out there in the surf, in, in you know, some of the male uh, dominated society, the women have much more ability to challenge the men. And it was the women that were considered the best surfers among the sexes. Just so we're all there. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because of that relation to the unknown sea goddess, Mother Russia. So he said it to me. Oh, it's got to be a mother of I was like, oh, yeah, actually, we talk about this? <laughs> we know that. No doubt about it. I mean, for us surfing today on these fancy plastic surfboards, um, we can all get pretty good pretty fast by using a 150 plus pound, 16 foot long, rounded bottom board with no fin. That's another story. Surfing takes great skill. And it does take mana in that way. Mana being your, well, supernatural power. And as I've said, what you've inherited, what you've acquired through your actions, your feet, your feet through your law. So it's inherited through your ancestral bloodlines, as in a lot of all those who came before us. Now, I put a picture of Hokulea and Nika Maria coming in from the worldwide voyage here in the middle of my surfing. Because, go look in our chats. Oh wait, here we go. I have said it yet. Anybody, what is the Hawaiian term for surfing? Whoa, I don't have that many coins. <laughs> he has coins to give out and share. Hey, no, that's right. Uh, Kyle has actually created a command commemorative uh, certain point. And so he wanted to share some of those with you. I'm not very good at trivia quiz this time, but hey no, oh cross <laughs> <laughs> What does Mao Mao mean? Far, 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 far away. Almost so far away it's unreachable. Oh good time. Oh yeah. <laughs> money is from surfer to surfer. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, you know, it means so far off it's almost unreachable. Ka'i e Mama was the, the name given to that great chief Lonai Kamakahiki, but it's a reference to surfing from afar. And that is the term for voyaging in the ancient chants. Gliding across the sea. It is one and the same. It's an oceanic practice. That's why the Kanaka Mano, the voyagers like Kamohaligi, are so important in the surfing traditions as well. Here's, you know, looking at surfing practices, surfing competitions were, were part of it. And uh, here we have them today, and it's a multi billion dollar industry. Back then, can you imagine? This is a little long, the big island, two mile long. There's the actual um, hey, whole little course to glide or slide down the mountain on some kitty grass and put over those rocks. Very ingeniously built to have slow, flat, slow, flat, slow, flat, and come all the way down and splash down into the sea over here. And at the same time that the person would jump, there would be a referee over here who dropped the flat. And the surfer, when the surfer is battling for the big waves, coming into this narrow gap. That takes mana. <laughs> and you better believe I'll be calling on my ancestors and my ancestral days and walking with practice. We 
know that we're supported by them. Yeah. They are. Maybe Kumupa remembers this um, Cory Bill over there in Altero who said, you know when a, when a Maori looks at you, he doesn't a Maori elder looks at you, he doesn't only see you. He sees all the ancestors standing on your shoulders. You know what that means, right? You better stand tall to support them. I was like, whoa. But then in that vision, there stands Duke Paul Kahanamoku, who represents serving to the world as I'm our ambassador of Allah is our ambassador of serving. He carried the pride of his whole nation around the world. That's the audience who had gone before when the world to had traveled all around the world. Something to be said for that. I saw it in my parents and my grandparents because they were proud to be part of this, you know, this Lahui, this nation. Oh, very important. So, yeah, we have our competitions today. And serving back in the practices, how to establish and maintain kapu, the class boundaries. Some boards and ways were reserved only for a lady, perhaps at the time for the contest. Now we have a lot of patrol to help with that. <laughs> Makes sense. But, you know, those practices, though, could be on occasion to break those protocols, those boundaries of class and kapu. It's a source of many stories. Love and life, lost and found. Out there in the surf, surfing. That makes great stories. Oh wow. I thought I was going somewhere else. Alright. <laughs> we'll go there. Those stories are all wrapped up in surf literature. We'll talk about that in a second. So surfing is a daily activity. It's also a ritual activity. I mean, with that, the competition, sure, we can take it one step further. It was integrated into the annual event, such as the Mokaiki Festival, which honors the gods and the chiefs, the days, the gods and goddesses and chiefs, and marks the passing of the seasons in a time of peace, this time I mentioned where it was known where the couples were laid down. And the first fruits of the land were offered up as it passed by each land division, each Alupua boundary. One of key in Hawaii, in one of my classes, uh, uh, named Kapali, he, he said, you know, if you look, the Alupua boundaries are on points of land. Well, what do you know points of land? Focus, wave energy, excellent serving sets. So the waves would come up, Everybody would drop their tools and what they were doing and go and support their aligi as they served, challenged each other and challenged themselves in the great waves on these various points of land, on the wall boundaries. You'll see that Pupu Kiawai Man, Kualo, Lampoko there, and loving the color rainbows, but Kalai Wokino. Many opportunities to celebrate. You can always plant, it's a lot cooler at night to go plant coffee. <laughs> but when the surf comes, we go. And unfortunately, it's given us a double butt wrap in the working world. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that's important still yet. So, more on the ritual aspects of surfing. I don't know if I should like, pull this up so I can see it instead of looking backwards all the time. Uh, nah, not going really. <laughs> <laughs> There's an Akuahani, a god of sport, presiding over surfing. Uh, well, we know Mono Akua presides over all the games in the Monkey Festival of S. It's come down to us through the 1830s when, when well, the 1820s when. when we saw that annual event after thousands of years. Thank goodness we're getting into the Olympics, so we can start the event. Um, in Hawaii, those stadiums include, um, you hear people on a coup, many of the circuit sites. There are an uh, analogy to coup. La ma la la Generations carried the board of the winds that came down to Kalao Kalao, and today you can find in the Iolani Palace. Is this still downstairs over there, the Iolani Palace? It was the Mission Museum for the last, uh, 
exhibit they had over there. Still a vision. Generation after generation had it done. And you could open the door to call on those wings. Now, when he got the serfs off of Hanea in Kauai with Lokia, the Pele's lover, after bringing him back to life, she calls on Lono to raise up the surf that night because she says, What do you like to do, Mom? He's like, I like the surf. <laughs> okay, shoots, no worries. And, and so the surf, uh, which is Lono, no one really, Lono, you really know what you like. Lono sits in the system class will raise up the surf, and then the next day she calls the Lono to be delivered from the surf when she's out there on the sea with the great waves that are coming towards, coming from the north, going towards instead of Mike from the south. Very environmentally correct. I used to surf in the North Shore of Kauai. No doubt about it. She knew what she was talking about. <laughs> in Tahiti, and this is really what inspired me from Pity's book, was said that there was this man named Huawei who presided over the certain traditions. And I looked and I looked and I looked and, you know, being a guy. I couldn't find any God in Huawei. But, you know, there, there she stood, the day. Hua, swell, Uli, Uli, who purple, black, also a connotation for his health and wellness. But the deep dark sea, the swell on the deep dark sea, the deep dark swell, that one out on the horizon, and you know it's bigger than all the other ones. Hua, Uli. That's her name. And she was the one who presided over the games in Tahiti. Wow. Humility. And it's because she's had genealogical connection to an older lineage. She was able to reach that ice crest of the waves. That's another story for another time. Anyway, anybody know about who? Kahoe Right there, all over in our community college behind Don Kahoe, which is the, the stairway to heaven spot. Right? We're going to come around the EAD when I kind of look up yesterday, um, there is the peak of Ukahuli. So the kind of genealogies of Hawaii and Tiki get together right there on the mountains. Because Hawaiians wrote their histories, their genealogies, on the landscape, on the land, in the sky, in the sea, in space. Because what? Paper does you no good on a boat. Once it goes, gets wet, it's gone, it's done. Your histories are forgotten unless you remember them. It's not that it wants to have written language. There's no need for it. You wrote it on the landscape. In a geospatial mapping that is repeated across the Pacific to tell the voyagers that come with Taiwan when the island is coming and what kind of environment, environmental factors you should expect when you get there. It was in COVID. Of course, one of my favorite, and again, for a long, long in, that we see in uh, bringing a large wing or leave a small wing or at home, because they know big winds make big waves. And that is a reference to the Aamah's uh, wig board that Pakhan would utilize to call out the surf. So we see that, and here we see it in, in an actual pair of surf to bring the surf around. Anybody been out there? Why am I saying? Yeah. Kubi uh, Yoloa uh, is the name of that very old guy today. So here we have. Said to be built by the same guys who were over in the side uh, after the new of the West. Here's that chant that I was speaking of, Hiyaka. She calls out. She talks about the cresting sea and the mounting sea and the clinging sea of Iku, a cousin of nature. That's another long story. But in the middle of all these great billows, these waves, the low lying waves, the agitated waves that reach Kahiki, we are unable to survive the stage of Kuhu. Oh, 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 oh. 
it is a very personalized slideshow as far as the pictures go. And uh, I want to give credit to Lane Baby, who's in the room, who's, who teaches um, who teaches in the English department. In fact, she just did a whole insert literature uh, class through her third 100 level English class. And it was her husband who took those pictures. So thanks, Dave, for letting me use them. There you are, there you so she really implemented this idea of what I'm getting to online sort of literature and um, really should have to speak next. <laughs> yeah. So it's sort of integrated as a daily activity. Sort of is integrated as a ritual activity. And you see there are many chaps that, that call on the way to rise and would then we ask for deliverance from all the ancestors. I think Mona was around. Okay. Serving is also integrated through place. Serving sites where they would build a temple structure type things, but they were more like spectator of nature, Buddhism. Okay, I'm going to try to stay still. Kule Manu, one of my favorite places there. Fresh water bathing, hot well over there, drinking well, and that's still there today. Even a pit to be able to cook dog because it doesn't take as long as it did. And men and women could eat it together after a good serve session. Just got to get the fire off early. Hey, a water house on top? Not back then. That has nothing to do with the importance of the hair product for this contact. But you can see these are terraces that are sloping to be able to view the wave that breaks off of the little reef over here. A couple of days in here. There's plenty of good serving sites. It's a really awesome place. Uh, that's over there, um, they got all that stuff. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. And further down a little bit more, you can see that's part of one of those old bandits and mine this morning, and that's the old Nahihi Hale. And there we have Kamehameha State Pool, because he learned to surf at these two places. This was Kamehameha's uh, residence. So he learned to surf at those two places, as well as the Alpamon. And they talked about having surf instructors teaching them with flags. Pointing in which direction to go and when to catch the wave. We did it then, let's do it now. Adi bitch. We've been doing 26 minutes out of COVID. I love this. I hope. Oh, okay. How about that? Um, there's one site when I went to ask permission to take pictures here. The caretaker said, hey, you gotta go around the corner. It's so funny. Go around the corner. You gotta take pictures of all that. Oh, that's where they did, did the offerings before they jumped in the water, paddled down, and surfed lines over here. Surfed the point. Wow. An actual shrine, specifically before they went in the water, named Hale House of Ahama. You guys know the Ahama crap yeah? the one, the king of the rock, the king of the front piece of that. <laughs> the king of the near shore surf environment and queen get, you know, the Ali can handle and pull the wave splashes and there is why do you do that? Alright. He's a good swimmer too. So there is there's some things he said. Look at that, quit him on the gal. In nineteen ninety two. Way long before I started any of this, I was still a surfer. Akuma um, my word, carousel, handed to me a piece of paper. So you're off from the book that said, she's in the yearbook, we'll go look this one surfing channel. Ooh, I took it, I was very scared. And years later, you know, as I was going through this, I came to understand what that was. And it says, no not all for wisdom. For wisdom. And this is the chant. It doesn't say, I really need to include that one because I became aware of what this chant really meant. She was right. It was, you know, 15 years after she handed that chat to me, I had the opportunity to go to Altero and along with Kumu Palmartan was Kumu Rula Ben Johnson. And the first time I met her at Windward, in preparation to go, she was hot. So you gotta start her out. Oh, <laughs> Soar, bad master sin. Don't do that! Soar. That's all she said. The whole. Four 
four years later, working hard at Pacific Island Studies for my master's degree, writing, you know, the almost 400 page long master's thesis on surfing as a traditional white cultural activity. She had said it without more than one word. She had said it. The basic metaphor of an excellent surfer in Hawaiian culture is, is the Koku bird, the albatross, the norio, the great seabirds that soar atop the crest of the wave. She had said it to me. You know, they talk about transferring knowledge through the hop, through the breath, through the sharing of breath. That's basically what that was. But it was for me, you go look for it. It was for me to figure out. So this chant, really what it does is it, it describes paddling out to close out my man bay and what it would be like with the thundering winds and the, 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 the rolling thunder in the clouds and the thundering waves and the lightning slashing in the heavens and the wind splitting in the heavens and you got to roll right and roll left and you're dodging and you're panting and you're bright and you're muttering, you're praying. Answer to the heavens. Let, you know, the, the thing is, is back then, when they come on the old K Kamaka, it's actually let the people in Latin safely bring them the mana, the the lawyer, the ike, the mana, the cleverness, knowledge, and supernatural powers. The Ike called them the law, sure. This is a translation as a Hanan Kokinada, so that the earth may ascend. The Ike called them the law, so I can land safely on the shore over there, lock over there. On the Unua, terra firma. <laughs> and it's for dealing with the challenges of daily life and the struggles there. I, you know, that air yeah, that came from that only came from standing there at this place, including one of the first time I ever chanted it. And um, it honored me in that way that, that uh, truly uh, called upon this chant. In times of struggle and in times of celebration as well. And in times when we are challenged by this literally. And that's what came out and out there um, being occupied at the House of the Cadillacs um, that we made in 2016. It is a certain chat. So, surfing is data activity, a ritual activity. Integrated through place, integrated through practices and traditions and competitions, and furthermore, integrated through the stories. The whole history is the literature of the people. So uh, it was a vehicle of expression for characters, for trade, and the prose and the poetry we find in, in modern stories. Because it was so popular and exciting, it was a great way to disseminate knowledge, to share knowledge about online culture. Because again, it's passed on orally. We can read the textbooks and get all the, the, the prose, the knowledge, or we can embed that knowledge into the story so they're easily remembered. And when you tell your kiki for the first time, they may just learn the characters' names and the main points. But 20 years later, when that story comes back, when they're hearing it from their cool in the profession that they're learning, then, ah, I remember that story. Now I understand what it means. Because they're later. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. That's okay. But this song is critical to Svarava to thrive both environmentally and socially for people on the planet. So what is only surf literature is what we're getting at. We're just going to say right up here and surf writing in ponies and culture. We can look at all this stuff. Um, the great thing is, this story is a direct lineage right on through. All into this room. Surfers from all over the world, all ethnicities in this room, carrying out this tradition, being part of the, the now story lore of our certain history. It didn't happen in factories, it happened in the backyards. It happened out on the sea. It happened in people's hearts. On every coastline on the world. And it's still happening. So deeply imbued with cultural knowledge, 
serving as a device utilized to emphasize various themes in one culture. Position as a subject matter, as I say, crosses, crosses class boundaries. We talk about that some. It's a good way to share knowledge. And you know, when we look at the knowledge itself, we look at relating to the environment, the uses of the environment, and human beings in society. Okay, not at our own role. This is one of my greatest, uh, my favorite examples of only insert literature right there. Only insert perpetually. Anybody know where Bukai Oliki is? Except John. Bukai Oliki. Oh, um, uh, yes, Oliki Lolo. My cutting Lolo. Alright, I love that first spot. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, so Kukai Oiki, Santa Cruz, Bashman. But uh, there on the plane, right in front of the, the river of Mahulu, you'll find these petroglyphs, including a Hawaiian surfer on the surfboard over there, Rainbow Man, a sign of the Aliki. Perhaps, even though it's not on the wall of the street, perhaps this was a place where they uh, did some of the surfing challenges related to the Mahulu. The whole field of petroglyphs. There's some Hawaiian literature right there. How many terms do scientists have for parts of the way that areas in the surface? Mm -hmm. This name? Mm -hmm. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Who else? Surfers. Because we utilize the environment. So I'm laying this out because my argument is that surfers, uh, I'm sorry, in, 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 in antiquity, in old Hawaii, they were surfing as much as they said they were in their stories. No doubt about it. The lit matters because we want to, you know, go away and get barrel. But it's part of the practice of being in the near shore environment. Be 60 left already, this is what it's all about. Skill building in your environment. And you've got to get technical. What if my beautiful wife Diana said, and I'm so grateful for all of the years she's had to deal with me. Uh, in this process is the academic vocabulary of the server. Yeah. I love the name of the name, the hot and on the breath of the way, the chiefly wind, you know what we call that? The spit. Oh, I see that spit. The chiefly wind, let's, let's reassess, let's reposition. Yeah, for those of you who know, Kua, an ancient term for us, and the back of the way, all an ancient term for life. When they come together, the breath of life, do you see that Aloha is embodied in the way? Aloha, the breath of life of the mother. There she is. I'm not going for that. Okay. <laughs> a few types of waves, yeah, but some more, some more academic vocabulary. Hey, that is a survey. Oh, save that for you, John. <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah, you know, instead of, look, so it's environment, uses of the environment. We got the tall trees, the rock quarries, we got the, the plant stains and the alai clay and the, the, uh, the lipo down there in the cobble patch. You know, we'll build surfboards with. John Papa E. E. again talks about different three types of surfboards and the types of ways that are written on. Oh, oh yeah, check it out, yeah. Good book. Yeah, good for the Kanalu Pati Ubudu. But not for the name that rises up high. Kanalu Ahale. You know what that is? Hale Hale. That's a two story house. That's not even that way it is. That's a guru who commits to Oh, yeah, that's like a true story. I love it. Why am I saying all these names? Because the knowledge is a genealogy in itself. And I'm so proud of that and share with all of these people. I'm honored. I'm humbled to walk among the deities of this place. True. Alai words, alai words, equal the longer, thinner ones, plain versus bearing halls. Um, this was in contemporary art museum, Mahalo Ma I don't even want to say Mahalo Ma There's Princess Kapiolani's surfboard that was made by Kalantana Ole, and she got the Paki's words. Much later, we see them in the Bishop Museum there. I want to point this out. Yeah, here's two Alaya on the inside, 
and two playful words type, smaller strip words are about three feet versus eight feet, little bits of class shapes. They were, this, this is knowledge repeated. This is like, right, I like to use this template because I like this template and we we'll make it for the size of the game we're going to give it to or we're going to. It was knowledge that was passed on and learned. This is hydrodynamics. We are talking rocket science. Very thin planning halls. The holes are very thick. And of course, the first board served in California, the Juan um, Apolo brothers and, and um, Prince John Kubo Kalayana Ole. This is one of his collection. It served in the 1880s down over there in the Santa Cruz site. I just saw some stuff on Instagram with um, Cliff. Kapono, um, reliving that experience as a Hollywood Korean man. That was powerful to see that. Very important, Sir Kalila, that we know of in historic times. And that's an important point to bring up. So, daily activity, ritual activity, integrated through the environment, through uses of the environment. And here in human beings and society, it is a theme that is encoded with the field of knowledge regarding the environment and all of these things, human beings in society. There was, that's my background, that's why I'm going to have this. Come on, listen to that. All my students get this. Yeah, we are going after the first one, these are culture class in UH model this semester. We had 20 kids, most of them all from the mainland, going, gosh, wow, well, sir. Good thing it was anthropology, eight. Hey, Starts with A, and um, they all get to come over and see these boards and try them, and experience them, because it's a hands-on thing. So we talked about the idea of um, uh, hereditary lineage. There's actually a way class of priestly or chiefly priests that use the way as a family metaphor that protected them. It was embodied their day in nature. And people lose a special place in that way. Here, yeah, there you go. There's one of their chants that talks about many different parts of wave and types of waves, and then goes into their actual genealogy. And one of the new age personality professors talking to Mako Chan in, in his um, doing the Kanalu history of Kanalu book said, Wow, look at that. This is the series of waves you find in a tsunami. A wave of people coming across the sea. A genealogy. Going further, one of their chants goes, hey, very correctly, shares deeper that, that set of knowledge, that poetic metaphor that's within it. In talking about this. Um, and you're talking about swell, cool. Yeah, cool on the way, they call it high. And you go, and this is where all of those parts of the wave in the picture came from. The cool and the hollow, the cool and the hollow, the cool the short period, the long period, the rough and swell out on the sea, the thundering lip, the spinning wave, the, the sorry, the chiefly wind, let's redo that. And then the spelling here. Is it Hakanawa, Hakanawa? I guess uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that. But you know, this thing with regards to swelling. Same kind of thing with the swelling of people. First the man swells, then the woman swells. It's a long swelling. Egg will go up swelling and brings forth life. A child. Some say that the movie boat itself is written in a metaphor of the birth and of the growth of a fetus and birth of a child. It is all about Growing a family, you show up on a small island. Old Wahoo. And that was the purpose of another class of priestly chiefs and Jesus. No wonder missionaries didn't like serving when I saw this one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but you know that feeling. So, I didn't want to, you know, uh, offend anybody, but it's really, I was, I was shivering with excitement. Oh, 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 why is that word for it? It's the same kind of shivering of excitement that we experience after a love making. A feeling of when you get off your best wave, you're stoked, you're shivering. You're out of backup. 
Uh, and it's, it's really amazing how deep that metaphor goes. But beautifully, not the way it was said. And with purpose. So, when it comes down to human beings as a society that constantly integrated, it's integrated through the mythology. Oh, God, we are almost there, you know. I'm actually doing great. <laughs> And, and I wrote you know, a book, and you know, we'll out here, and he says, Oh, what bliss, you can reach out to you that are possibly able to imagine. Yes, you've heard um, where that comes from. But he says this, the misalleges of the secret peoples of Oceania are poetic visions encoded with environmental and cultural information to bring about the pride and growth of the nation. Poetic visions encoded with information once you take it out of the language, the visions may be lost in translation. But that's why I'm very grateful for the liberal translations of, uh, of that 1900s period with Maricopa Pukui as such. Because by translating literally, it sounds like dragons are battling, you know, lightning skirted maidens. And yet, we can back translate if we have to. But now it's our job in this generation, in the future generations, to start digging into that good language and understand what is it that the Kupuna, that the ancestors felt was so important to make sure that we, the future generations, would not, could learn from being here in Hawaii. Poetic they preserve the history, traditions, cultural beliefs of the people of the Pacific Islands, as long as they've been going to five million or four thousand years. So, certainly, is utilized, you know, as, as a theme, as a motif, as a device within the stories. It's a collective identity that calls on those metaphors, uh, and all kinds of reasons, all kinds of reasons, servers. Have to go through every single potential like experience you could go through in the Hawaiian pantheon, the Hawaiian worldview, in, in the experience of living in the Hawaii. And so we learn. But what's most important about that learning is the characters may make the right decision or the wrong decision, but it's placed before us, each of us, to make that cultural choice. That's fine. That's so you can learn it easy way, or you can go through it later and learn the hard way. Thank goodness we've been told stories about <laughs> Plenty of people turn to snow back in old Hawaii. Yeah, they're still on the landscape, reminders for us. So, it's all proud. These are just a few of the surfing legends. Hey, when you say myth, there's nothing, there's nothing false about it. These are real people. These are real chiefs and chiefesses, the deities of old. And of new, yeah, kid, my mom. I love that guy. There, that's my mom. There's plenty you can go read. And you can find it all now in one book written by John Clark. The Lions of Big Traditions. <laughs> you know, it's okay, find all this stuff. And he found even more. So I'm very, we're so lucky to have this on the um, done such a good job collecting and serving resources for us. I can't wait to hear him stop and talk, so I better stop. <laughs> hey, there's Juan Kahikilani. Maybe he didn't make the right choice. He got turned to stone. A boundary marker now. Behind the chevron, over there, you know, the boundary between Pomolu and Pukukea. Look halfway up the hill and you'll see him with a big banding tree behind him. There he is, running to get to the cave of Kaiulani, the bird maiden. He had unfortunately broken her heart. Talk to man, he turned to stone. You can see her lay that she gave him, the hapu lay, still on his head as he runs up the hill. In the 1400s, he got beat Capolio Pele, came around the corner of White Mount Bay, and they were doing one type of surfing that you're going to learn about very soon. And when she calls out to the Konohiki, the land manager of the area, hey, Piliama, hey, what kind of fish you get? I'm hungry. Tell me about your place. She was like a farmer's guide, a, you know, like a traveler's guide to Hawaii in the 1400s. What kind of fish you get? What kind of plants you get? What kind of 
What are the family names that are in there? Who am I going to pass by? So that when you pass by, if you know the empty tail, you know what to expect. He got scared by her radiance, and he stepped on a stone and climbed up the hill to go to his house up there, by Bobby Owen's house up there. Um, and lo and behold, he turned to stone. A crab, a crab-shaped stone, four feet wide, three feet tall, with a giant footprint from his last leap. Can you see it? One, two, three, four, five. Get all five toes and get the heel. This thing is about this big on top of the rock to this day. The uh, um, archaeology of the wall. He takes a look. He writes it, says it's behind, beside the trail, going down into Lineman Bay. I cut away some bushes and vines. And there it is, chipped by bulldozers only three feet from the high road. P. Ah, ah, ah. There it is again. The clinging P. Crab is the surfing chief of Waimea. Now it's considered one of the most endangered Hawaiian surfing sites on our islands. An endangered archaeological site, rather, because it's so close. So um, SHPD and, and DLNR and them have all um, acknowledged this. So it's one of the things I hope to find funding for to actually create a, like the rod iron Pulse with a single chain just going around in a little story like they have at the Kahuna stones that are also serving stones behind Duke's statue in Waikiki. And it says, this is where the surfers went to pay homage to Piliahama and ask for success in surfing Waimea in ancient times. Yeah. There he is, Piliahama. So, see how tall you so cool. I can make it now. <laughs> there are so many traps to go off in the wall stories. Surfing is integrated in Hawaiian culture as a daily practice, a ritual, athletic, and poetic metaphor employed within Hawaiian literature to share knowledge. Yeah. The importance of surfing then reflects its importance now. How it was so horrifying. And you know, looking especially in relation to world culture, which has been infiltrated in every way by this truly only practice. Surfing 20 million worldwide. And you know what came with that surfing practice? The Aloha spirit. Went over to England, right? We went to Nuki and Vistro. We went out one night in, in, in the clubs, my wife Diana and I, and everybody was wearing Aloha shirts in this surfing town. <laughs> That's really cool. And they're really nice people. So, you know, my shameless plug, surf study is an excellent way to learn about Hawaiian culture and support to our future that we position surfing as truly one and promote surfing as a always gift to the world. Just as Duke Paul Kahnemo who had done it. And you know, if you look at Duke, what took him around the world? Was it surfing? Yeah. It was swimming. It was swimming. And you know that Kahanamu kick, that double flutter kick that he taught us all. Say one of Mark Phelps, or you know, learn when he was in the Olympics, all those guys. That changed the world. That taught us how to swim against five knot current in the ocean. So in that way, there's no one lifeguard, not even John and I, <laughs> who would have saved more, uh, prevented more drownings. Because he taught us all how to swim. In the history of the world. Because he taught us all how to swim. And he shared that with everyone. Yeah. Wow. So it's, you know, we just got the Hawaii State Surfing Commission. And it's going to support surfing in many ways. I put up a little picture of my, my dad and, and my keiki to say it truly is all about the future. And whatever we can do to support surfing in Hawaii and stand behind that and lift it up, we should do that. Because it's our tradition and it's important. And in that kuleana responsibility comes that privilege to share with the rest of the world. Hey, Hawaii, Kako, we are Hawaii. Kanalu, Hawaii, Hey, you guys, thank you so much for being here.